Kristen Donahue, president of the Pioneer Valley Symphony, and I'm so excited tonight to welcome you to the world premiere of The Mystery of the Missing Music by acclaimed composer Jordan Cuspa. The PVS is one of the oldest community orchestras in the U.S., with more than 80 years providing exceptional musical opportunities to our local region, including decades of involvement with our local students. This year, we've expanded our outreach and our audience in large part because of generous donors, sponsors, and volunteers supporting our work. If you would like to donate or shop in our store, please follow the link in your chat or visit our website. Our performance today has been created by the musicians of the Pioneer Valley Symphony Orchestra with the music direction of Maestro Tian Hui Hu and the key support of more than a dozen engineers, producers, and staff. Originally conceived for the PBS's 27th annual education program, which serves about 1,000 local third and fourth graders each year, this commission piece reflects the dedication of the PBS to new works and community education, Dr. Cuspa's extraordinary imagination, and Tian's inspiration in bringing unique and enthralling experiences to our audiences of all ages during the past year. A huge and very special thanks goes out to our volunteer education program coordinator, Mandy Jo Hanke, whose work creating and distributing the six week companion curriculum to participating schools is essential to this annual program. And to orchestra member, Judy Hudson, who began the program more than 27 years ago. This performance and the 2021 PBS education program are made possible by the generous support of the Mary Stewart Rogers Foundation. Additional support is provided by the local cultural councils of Amherst, Ashfield, Belchertown, Bernardston, Buckland, Charlemont, Holly, Coleraine, Deerfield, Greenfield, New Salem, Northfield, Shelburne, Shutesbury, and Whateley, which are supported by the Mass Cultural Council, a state agency. Obviously, a lot of our neighbors are really enthusiastic about this concert. Additional support is provided by our season sponsors, Greenfield Cooperative Bank, New England Public Media, and the Massachusetts Cultural Council. I would like to express our sincere gratitude and appreciation for the incredible Mary Stewart Rogers Foundation, who have been a tremendous supporter of our annual education concert for more than 20 years. Mary Stewart Rogers was a champion for education and the arts. Joining us today is Janet Rogers, Mary's granddaughter, with a special message for you. Thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, my name is Janet Rogers and I'm the granddaughter of Mary Stewart Rogers. She started our family foundation to help those who help themselves. That is what we see in the Pioneer Valley Symphony and Orchestra and why we have supported the MSR educational concert for over 20 years. We believe that music education is crucial to the social and academic success of our younger generation especially in these most challenging times. Please join us in supporting the PVSO and MSR educational programs, either by your time, talent, or treasure. God bless you all and enjoy the concert. My name is Tian. I'm the music director of the Pioneer Valley Symphony, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to today's performance. We have a special treat for everyone. In the midst of the pandemic, we are premiering a brand new piece for a full orchestra, specially written for us by my good friend and a fabulous composer, Jordan Cuspa. We started talking to Jordan about this piece at the end of 2019. And here we are two years later and so extremely excited to share a piece written for the third graders in the Pioneer Valley. Look out for references to local sites here in the Valley and enjoy this fun adventure of a piece. Thank you. 
got any leads on a new case, Jake? Hey, Gemma. Unfortunately, no. Ever since the lockdown, it seems that nothing ever happens around here. Well, at least we're healthy. Besides, the lack of cases has given me a chance to catch up on my reading. Oh? What are you reading? The encyclopedia. Oh, that sounds so boring. No, I love it! I learn so many new things, and when I find something new that excites me, I can always do more research. And what letter of the encyclopedia are you on, then? I'm still reading A. It's a big volume. Looks like we have a long way to go. Hello? Hello? Is this the Jake and Gemini Detective Agency? Yes, this is Gemini speaking. You're, you're the team that helped the art museum recover that stolen statue? Yes, that was my twin brother and me. Excellent. You're just the person I need to talk to. I'm Maestro Tianhui Ng, conductor of the Pioneer Valley Symphony. We have a terrible situation and we could really use your help. Is it a case? We would certainly love to help, Maestro. I'm going to put this call on speakerphone so my brother can hear what you have to say. Great. Thank you for your help. Hi, Maestro, this is Jake Nye. Please tell us what has happened. Yes, of course. You see, we have a big concert coming up. We've been planning this for a long time, and we commissioned the composer to write a new piece of music to celebrate the occasion. Our rehearsals are supposed to start this week. The concert is this weekend, and, and now all of the parts for the new piece are missing. I'm sorry, Maestro. But, what do you mean, the parts? The sheet music. The papers that tell all of the musicians in the orchestra what notes to play. They're gone, and there is no time to make new ones. We need to find this missing music ASAP! Okay, Maestro. Can you tell us how you discovered that the music is missing? Of course. I got a message this morning from our music librarian saying that the parts had just arrived. They only arrived today? But didn't you say the concert was this weekend? Well, you know how composers are. Always leaving things to the last possible minute. Sounds like Jake with his homework. Hey, I always get it done. Eventually. Anyway, so the parts arrived today. Yes and the musicians were told to go to the music library and pick up their part. I headed over there right away because I needed to pick up the score. The score? Yes, that's the sheet music that has all of the parts on the same page so the conductor can see what all of the instruments play at the same time. But when I got to the office, there was no score, no parts, there was nothing at all. I called our librarian, and she told me she had definitely left the music there. Soon, all of the musicians came in to get their parts, and we all realized something terrible had happened. Do you think you will be able to help us? We will do our best, Maestro. Thank you, thank you. Don't worry, Maestro. We'll find your missing music. As I like to say, when you have a mystery to solve, the answer is nigh. Oh, brother. Maestro, we'll head to the music library to see if we can find any clues. Thank you again. Please let me know if there is anything I can help you with. Will do. Come on, Jake. Let's go.
Wow, there is so much music in here. There is. I think it would be so cool to learn how to read sheet music. Think of all the different kinds of music I could play. Definitely. But Gemma, what if the missing music is just mixed up in all this? It would take ages to find. That's true. Let's see if we can find some clues before we go looking through all that. Who is that from? I don't know. The number is blocked. Oh, we'll read it. Oh, wow. What is... I see you're on the case. Don't ask me how I know. I like to play my tricks wherever I may go. To find the missing music, I have a game for you. You'll have to do some research to understand my clues. The members of the orchestra will help you on your way. So ask them lots of questions to find your prize today. What? So this person stole the music and now they want to play a game? Hang on, there's more. First, find the musician who plays a silver pipe. To help you solve this riddle, they'll be just the type. I want to know the word for a special grain. You'll find it in the garden, the forest, and the plain. Don't be too confused. Don't let it make you sneeze. This should be very simple. It's carried on the breeze. It flies upon the wind or sometimes on a bee. The grain that is required before you get a seed. Wow, this is crazy. Any of that make sense to you? Uh, a word for a special grain, carried on the breeze, and flies on a bee? Let's go back to the beginning. Good idea. It says, find a musician who plays a silver pipe. A silver pipe? Uh, that sounds like a flute. You're right! Let's call the flutist up and see if they can help us. Hello? Hi, this is Gemma Nye. I'm here with my brother Jake. We're trying to track down the missing music, and we thought that you might be able to help us. Well, I'm happy to help. We musicians really need that sheet music so we can practice. Thank you. Now, we got an anonymous message that said if we want to find the missing music, first we should find the musician who plays a silver pipe. Wait a minute, you don't think that I had something to do with this? No, nothing like that. But the message said that you might be able to help us solve a riddle. I don't know, I'm not very good at riddles. Oh, well, why do you think the message said that we should ask you then? I have no idea. I'm a botanist, not a detective. I'm sorry, uh, what's a botanist? Botany is the study of plants. So, a botanist is a scientist who studies plants. Hmm. Well, maybe we should tell you the riddle. Gemma? Right. The message says, I want to know the word for a special grain. You'll find it in the garden, the forest, and the plain. Don't be too confused. Don't let it make you sneeze. This should be very simple. It's carried on the breeze. It flies upon the wind, or sometimes on a bee, the grain that is required before you get a seed. 
I was trying to think of different types of grain, like wheat, oats, or rice, but you don't really find those in a garden. I thought it could be grains of sand, because if the wind blows, sand can definitely fly. But I don't know what sand has to do with seeds, though. And I've certainly never seen sand flying on a bee. You can see we're pretty stumped. Well, I think the answer must be pollen. Pollen? Yes, it fits everything. Pollen is made by plants. Sometimes they make it in flowers and sometimes in cones. So you can definitely find it in the garden, forest, and plains. And really almost anywhere you find plants. Plants use pollen to fertilize their eggs. Wait, plants have eggs? Not like bird eggs, but sort of. Plant eggs are called ovules, and once those ovules are fertilized by pollen, the plant begins to turn them into seeds. Then what does it have to do with flying on the wind? Or bees? In order for the fertilization to happen, pollen has to move from flower to flower. Sometimes it's blown by the wind, or sometimes it hitches a ride on a pollinator, like a bee or a bird or an insect. Bees are very important pollinators. That all seems like it fits. But what does it mean, don't let it make you sneeze? Pollen in the air can really irritate some people, making their nose run, their eyes water, and yes, making them sneeze. Pollen allergies are the most common allergy in the United States. Well, pollen definitely seems like the answer. Thank you for your help. My pleasure. Good luck! Quick, text pollen back to our anonymous trickster and see what they say. Okay. That was just a warm-up. Now the game is hot. You'll need to ask the leader for you to have a shot. I'm thinking of a mountain with fire at its core. You'll find it in the country where opera was born. This mountain's on an island, the largest in the sea. It's famous for its ruins. Can you guess which it might be? Find the flaming mountain. I only want the name before I give the next clue of my little game. Flaming Mountain sounds like a volcano, but which one? There are around 1,500 active volcanoes in the world. What else is in the riddle? The country where opera was born. I don't know much about opera. And didn't the message say that the vol volcano was on an island? So many volcanoes are on islands, like Hawaii, Japan, New Zealand. We should get help. The message said to ask the leader. Should we call the maestro? I think so. The conductor is the leader of the orchestra, right? Give him a call. Hi, maestro. This is Jake Nye. Jake! Have you found the music? Not yet, but we are hot on the trail. We have some questions we thought you might be able to answer. Anything I can answer, I will. First, can you tell us the country where opera was born? Oh yes. That would be Italy. The first operas were written and performed there over 400 years ago. And to this day, opera is extremely popular in Italy. Italy, uh, that narrows things down a lot. Maestro, this may seem strange, but do you know of any volcanoes in Italy? Volcanoes? In Italy? 
What does this have to do with finding the missing music? Hi, Maestro. This is Gemma. We got an anonymous tip that said, if we want to find the missing music, we need to find the name of a volcano in Italy on a big island famous for ruins. This should help us find the music. Do you have any idea what this volcano might be? No idea at all. Really? The message said we should ask the leader of the orchestra. But I'm not a geography expert. Wait, maybe you should ask our concertmaster. What's a concertmaster? Well, the first violinist in the orchestra is called the concertmaster. They are responsible for tuning the orchestra and for things like telling the string section what direction their bows should move. It's a very important job. In fact, in Britain, they call the concertmaster the leader. Do you think they could be able to help us? I hope so. Give them a call. We will, Maestro. Thanks. Hello. Hi, I'm Jake Nye. My sister and I are working to find the missing music, and we were hoping you might be able to help us. Of course. What can I do for you? We were hoping you could help us solve a geography riddle. Oh, I love geography. I think it's so cool to learn about different parts of the world. It really makes me wish I could travel. Yeah. Well, we, we need to know the name of a volcano in Italy. Is it Mount Vesuvius? That's a really famous volcano in Italy. Almost 2,000 years ago, Mount Vesuvius erupted and destroyed several cities in the ancient Roman Empire, including the city of Pompeii. Is Vesuvius on a big island? No, it's on the mainland. Well, that can't be it. We need a volcano on a big island famous for ruins. Oh, then it must be a volcano on Sicily which is the biggest island in the Mediterranean Sea. Sicily is famous for many things, including many ancient ruins from several thousand years ago. Gemma, look up what volcanoes are on the island of Sicily. I've got it. It must be Mount Etna, the highest volcano in Western Europe. Etna is almost 11,000 feet high. Etna, that's right. Well done. Thanks for your help. Anytime. Quick, text Etna back to our mystery messenger. I'm on it. Done. Let's see if we get another riddle. It looks like we will. Here it is. I'm thinking of a painting, like looking in a mirror. I think it's very simple, but maybe I'll be clearer. All artists need to try this before they are a master. So find yourselves an artist to make the game go faster. Now, to find an artist, don't look far and wide. Just ask the musician whose instrument can slide. Hmm. A little shorter this time. Not much to go on. A painting like looking in the mirror? We should get help right away. We need a musician whose instrument can slide. But can't all instruments slide? I bet this means the instrument is made of a slide. But I don't think there are any slide whistles in the orchestra. No. But there is a trombone. That has to be it. Let's call up the trombonist. Hey, who's this? Um, hi, this is Gemma Nye, and we're trying to find the music that disappeared. Yeah, we really need to get that music back. We're trying our best. Do you think you could help us? Well, I'll certainly try. Thank you. Our clue says we need to find an artist. That's me. I'm mostly a painter, but I also like to draw with charcoal and pastel. But why do you need an artist? We received a clue that said we need to find a painting that's like looking in the mirror. 
Is there a famous painting that's like super shiny or something? Wow, you know, uh, not that I can think of. That's a strange clue. Jake Nye here. The, the clue also says that all artists need to try this before they are a master. Interesting. You know, that makes it sound less like a specific painting and more like a type or genre of painting. Something like looking in a mirror that every artist needs to try. Of course, it must mean a self-portrait. Oh, I can't believe I didn't think of that. We did self-portraits in school once. Oh, I'm sure you did. A self-portrait is any piece of art that an artist depicts themselves. A self-portrait is often a drawing or a painting, but it can also be a mosaic or a sculpture. Many artists produce self-portraits when they are learning because you always have your face with you when you want to make art. To see it, all you need is a mirror. Excellent, thank you. Hey, no worries. I hope you find that music soon. Gemma, this is all fine, but we need to hurry. How many more riddles can there be? I don't know. I just texted self-portrait. Let's just hope we won't be on a wild goose chase all day. This is such a strange case. It really is. Here we go. Another riddle. Well, this better be the last one. I think it is. Listen. So now we come upon the heart of the matter. But don't expect this clue to be served on a platter. This is a thing so small that you could never see it, but it is quite explosive when you make it split. It's part of everything, the air, the sea, the ground, but not an energy, like light or heat or sound. If this seems very tricky, then find yourselves a wit who has an instrument they really love to hit Oof. This sounds like the hardest one yet. I agree. Who do you think we should talk to for help? Who loves to hit their instrument? Drummers hit their instrument, but do they have drummers in orchestras? I've never seen any orchestra concerts with rock drums in them, but they do have snare drums and bass drums and those bell-shaped drums called timpani. You're right! Uh, what do you call the musician who plays those? Let me check the list of musicians. It has to be the percussionist! Well, call them up! Hello? Hello. We're investigating the case of the missing music, and we would like your help. Sure. I'll do what I can. Great. But first, I have a question for you. Do you really love to hit your instrument? <laughs> well, as a percussionist, I play many instruments, and all of them are either hit, scraped, or shaken to make a sound. The percussion family has dozens of instruments, and I have to play all of them. Today, I'm practicing my marimba. I use mallets to hit these bars, and each bar is a different note. That's really cool. It is, but... Unfortunately, that's not what we need to talk about, Jake. You're right. Let's solve this riddle. You need help solving a riddle? Yes, and the riddle suggested that you might be the best person to help us. Hmm, I don't know why. When I'm not playing percussion, I'm a chemist. Well, listen to this riddle and see if it makes more sense to you than it does to us. This is a thing so small that you could never see it. But it is quite explosive when you make it split. It's part of everything, the air, the sea, the ground, but not an energy, like light or heat or sound. I'm stumped. I mean, what could be so small that you can't see it, but is explosive too? It is tricky, but I can see why I was meant to help you. My field, chemistry, is the science of chemicals elements and compounds that make up everything in the universe. We study the structure of things and how they behave when they interact with each other. But what's so small? We call all of these things matter. Everything you can touch is matter. And all matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms. Atoms? As in atomic bomb? 
That's right. When you break an atom apart, it releases energy. And if you break certain kinds of atoms, you can release a lot of energy, even enough to create a bomb. But we usually use atomic energy to produce electricity to use in our homes and other buildings. But the riddle says this isn't a thing of energy. Atoms aren't energy, but they work with energy. It's all very connected. Are you sure that atom is the answer? I'm pretty sure. Atoms are the building blocks of all matter. I just remembered. Now we come to the heart of the matter. That was part of the clue too. You're right. So Adam must be right. That's great. You've been a huge help. Thanks, but we have to run. All right. Best of luck. We need you two to come through. Gemma, text the answer and let's see if we finally learn where this music is hidden. Done. Now here's the final clue to put it all together. Take all the other clues, but just the first two letters. Then put them in a row and learn the final stop. Where I left the music, it's at the very top. The final clue. Quick, what were all the other clues? The first clue was pollen. Okay, so the first two letters are P-O. And then we had Etna. E-T. P-O-E-T. Poet. The third clue was self-portrait. Right. S-E. And lastly, Adam. A-T. S-E-A-T. Seat. Poet. Seat. Oh my goodness! The Poet Seat Tower! The final stop! Where it left the music! At the very top! Call the maestro! Maestro, the music. We think it's at the top of the Poet Seat Tower. You do? I'm really close to that. Let me go see if it's there. Perfect. Let us know. Jake, I've been thinking. Who would do something like this? Huh? I mean... This is a strange and elaborate prank. Riddles on riddles and asking all these musicians questions? All for what? You're right. It is bizarre. Uh, whoever did this went to a lot of trouble. But those riddles didn't write themselves. Yeah, and remember how I got that text almost as soon as we got to the music library? And how did they get my number? Now that I have a moment to think about it, it is extremely odd. Maestro? You did it! You solved the case! The music is all here. Our concert is saved. That's fantastic. You and Gemma are heroes. Absolutely brilliant. Thank goodness we had you on the case. We were happy to help, Maestro. In a way, it was actually fun. Stressful fun. <laughs> I truly cannot thank you both enough. You must be my special guests of honor at the concert. We would love to. Yes, yes. Calling you two was the best decision I could have made. Maestro, not to put a damper on things, but who do you think might have done this? Yes, was there any clue on the music as to who might have left it there? No, it was all in its box. Wait, there is something. What is it? It's a small card. There are no words on it. It's just a sort of logo. It sort of looks like a tortoise shell or maybe a helmet. And it has wings? We'll definitely want to see that card, Maestro. Of course, of course. Honestly, I'm just overjoyed our concert can go on as planned. Thank you again. We will see you at the performance. I have to get this music to the musicians. Bye, Maestro. See you soon. A winged tortoise helmet? Jake, look! You've done so well. I'm quite impressed. 
I'll be back soon. You'll need your best. H. Thank you. We would not be able to perform this piece for you tonight if it were not for the extraordinary efforts of two brilliant young detectives who jumped into action and saved the day when all seemed lost. We, the members of the Pioneer Valley Symphony, would like to dedicate this world premiere performance to Jake and Gemini. <laughs> 